episode of it would seem as though the podcast where we talk about anything everything and nothing mostly nothing mm. i'm vesta i'm annika and we're so glad to be back i know well yeah. well, <laughs> well i'm not sure that i'm so glad to be back here in yeah. our state-of-the-art studio right. in sunny southeast portland yeah or is it overcast it's overcast know. i guess it is overcast uh, but last week uh as y'all know we came to you from the Live from Lincoln City. Beach. Yep. Yeah. Where we spent so much time not on the beach. Uh-huh. All In fact, we spent almost all of our time not on the beach. Yeah. We didn't spend any time on the what beach. What do you mean the beach? What's the beach? Um, well, we drove to the beach. Oh, yeah. We took pictures. We looked at the beach through the window. Yeah. It was lovely. Stunning. It was beautiful but and awesome. I yeah. also don't want to. I mean, I will go to the beach. You know what I mean? I'll go on the beach. That's fine. Whatever. Yeah. But it's not my goal every time because why? I don't. I don't care. What am I? I'm not sunbathing. I'm not playing on the beach. I'm not getting in the water. And also, sand is a bitch. Sand is a bitch. Sand yeah. is my enemy. Uh huh. Because first of all, when you Mortal step out enemy. onto that soft sand, Ugh. I feel like I'm gonna die before I ever yeah. even get to the hard sand. Yeah. Because my whole body's like old and crickety, and yeah. I'm all trying to walk and sinking, and I'm just like, oh. Well, yeah. And it feels like you take. 10 steps literally for every one step. Right. You know, and it's like, it saps all my energy. If you have any like, like physical mobility issue, walking on the beach is a, is awful. Yeah. I remember when I broke my foot and I was at the coast and I said, well, I can't be here. Like, what's the point of me being here? I can't move. Like getting anywhere on the beach when I had to like hobble essentially was. Yeah. No. And it's not like you could use crutches on the beach because <laughs> no. they'll just sink into the sand Girl, and you'll be right. down on your face. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So. Yeah. The beach, it's beautiful, it's stunning. I love seeing the ocean, I love being near it. But like I said, I do prefer the, the coasty, like coast kind of ocean opposed to beaches. After living in LA, the beaches that I like the most were, you know, the parts of land closest to the ocean, but not sandy where people are sunbathing and children are building sandcastles. I don't care about that shit. Um, I like tide pools and I like mm. the rockier cliffside yeah. and I like that way more way way more than the boring ass beach when I was in 8th grade mm-hmm. we did an 8th grade field trip to the beach it was supposed to be a 3 day camping trip which Ew. to me is like you know torture porn I <laughs> <laughs> just kill yeah. me yeah. I'm sorry and then it rained the first night and you know, tents, and this is 1976. So they didn't have tents, waterproof. <laughs> yeah, but they were the kind of waterproof, literally, that if you touch them, you de-waterproof them, if that makes any kind of sense. What? Yeah, so you were supposed to, like, when it started raining, yeah. not touch them. Oh. So if the water's pooling, you, like, went underneath with a stick, push yeah. up so the water go out. But if you put your hand on the oils from your hand... Weird. Would, yeah, take away the waterproof. I mean, you know, that was at least the theory. That's what yeah, it said. You know, whatever. Yeah. And the first night, it just pissed down rain, and which is gross. But yeah. it's the Oregon coast. Sure. In spring. Yeah, yeah. Of course it's going to. And so the second day, we went to the tide pools. Mm. Now that, to me, was super cool. I love that. Because mm-hmm. one, we were just kind of turned loose, mm-hmm. and which I think, who would turn loose a pack of 14-year-olds? Anywhere. At the ocean shore. Really, at the ocean shore here in Oregon. Nor. You know, it's like, I went to summer camp every year, and one of the first, every day, every year, the first day of camp, they would take us down to the beach and go, okay, here's the rules. Yeah. You know, never turn your back on the ocean. Yep. Tide pools will, the tide, no, excuse me, the undertow will kill you. Yep. The tide will sneak up on you. Yep. All the things, right? Well, so, and they, there's like turning loose a pack of kids. Here you go, go play on the beach. And I spent most of my time alone yeah just looking at the tide pools same because there's so much cool stuff in there Love you know yeah. like all like the starfish and the anemone and yeah. all that you know i that was one of my favorite things as a kid because the ocean and underneath the water freaks me out so much i love being able to see the things without needing to be in right or near like the, well, deep in the tide pools you can see the bottom honestly and yeah, it's like it's like a bowl. touch the bottom right and, and some of them even though it's like it's like a kiddie pool size so it's not deep it's no, not right. big it's scary um, talking about the undertow killing you, um, when a core memory for me is when my birth parents were still married and we were at the beach. So I was three, three, two or three, whatever. Okay. I remember breaking all of those rules, like not turning your back to it, 
but like no one told me not to. You know, it was like early nineties and I remember standing at like the, the shoreline and so I'm like, it, you know, the sand is wet underneath me and I'm like looking at my parents and I remember just a wave hit me and like my feet were swept out and I remember just like clinging onto the sand to like it's pulling me back and sure. there's like finger mark. And that, I think maybe that's where all my trauma starts with the ocean. Perhaps. It tried to like take me home yep. and I said, stranger danger, yeah, you know? No, thank you. And then, and but here's the thing too, is I remember getting up and being shaken and sopping wet, you know, and um, having the adults just think, oh. It was so silly. You got so scared for nothing. But I was like, bitch, I could have been taken to sea. Yeah, little girl. Yeah. But for me, the idea of that, of just how fast and how furious, not to plug that movie, but oh literally, yeah. you know, I've been on the beach. I've been in the water when the waves are bigger than you expect yeah. or the water moves faster than you think it's yep. going to. And because the Oregon coast is the way it is, the undertow is a huge deal. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time I was on the beach uh, playing with my friends. Mm -hmm. um, and I was out probably mm, up to my waist, okay. which I don't know how, because that water is like fucking ice mm -hmm. water. It yeah. is so freezing cold. A nice cold. little ice bath. And people tell you, well, the longer out you get used to it, you don't ever get used to it. It feels <laughs> like needles poking your legs or whatever. And, but I had managed to get out that deep and I was, I think I was just fixing to come back in when a big wall of water hit me and knocked me down mm -hmm. and I was underwater uh, no. completely and, and it kind of pulled me out a little bit and it didn't feel like I'd gone very far, but when I stood back up, the water was up to my neck mm -hmm. and I'm looking at the, turned around looking at the beach going, Oh my God, that's so far away and feeling like I'm not going to be able to get back. I mean, obviously I was fine. But it yeah. was just that moment of terror. Yeah. Like, girl, uh, no. Uh, 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 I'm going to uh, drown. This is where I die. Yeah. 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 This is where and how <laughs> yep. she meets her end. You know? <laughs> and Honestly. so, yeah, actually going to the beach is not a thing. Now, when I go with the kids, obviously, they want to go play on the beach and whatever. And so I will go. But I like to go um, where, there's, where the beach is kind of more shallow. Mm-hmm. So there's not as far. Yeah. Or where there's... Um, like an inlet. One of the places we go where there's an inlet mm -hmm. where they can play in it. Because that water's always warmer. Yeah. You know. Warmer. Oh my God. One of the funniest stories for me is I had taken the kids, T and I had taken the kids to uh, the beach. And for some reason I'm blanking on the name, but it doesn't matter. Um, anyhow, we're at the little inlet and Parker decides he's, he's going to build a bridge mm -hmm. over the inlet. And this is hmm, six years ago. So he's six, six or seven. And he's takes all of the driftwood and all the things and spends all this time very meticulously building a bridge across the inlet. And the inlet's probably 10 feet wide. Mm -hmm. But he gets it all done, walks across the bridge. He's so proud of himself. And then turns around, tromps back through the water to get, see, like, <laughs> he was like, why, uh, why did what you was, spend all that time yeah. and effort? And now it's time to leave and you're sopping wet and covered in sand. Ugh. Yeah, I, I hate that shit. That to me is the worst part. So like, you never get the sand off mm -hmm. you no matter how you try. No, nope. Your skin just feels like sandpaper forever. Okay. Do you remember when we were at um, Venice Beach? Okay. Ugh. Yep. And we were playing around doing the sand. And then yep. we went up to the bathrooms. And right outside the bathrooms, they had the showers you could just wash off. Yeah, yeah. Get the sand. And then we went into the bathroom. Oh my god! Vile. And the bathrooms were so disgusting. Vile. But there were also holes in the wall where we yeah. could see people walking by, and I yep. was like, "Nope, yeah, I will piss my pants before I even yep. think about going well, to the bathroom." And there. like almost every toilet was just like filled to the brim. Yeah, like it was the most. And that was my. It first... It was the bathroom from Train Spotting, a girl. And I <laughs> that was my first experience with like a California beach, and I said. What the fuck? The movies make this look much better, honey. Because what I know, the fuck and it is, is this? not. It was not good. Yeah, it was horrible. But I mean, I didn't have fun. And I, wa I remember walking through the water because, like, we were wearing pants. I like, rolled our pants up, yeah. took our shoes off, whatever. But I, barefoot. And I remember people afterwards. Once I lived in LA, they were like, "You did what? Don't go in that ocean barefoot. Don't go on Venice Beach barefoot." And I said. Well, now that you say I, that. I was a child. I, I didn't know. know. I was just a little baby 15-year-old. Yeah. What was I supposed to know? Right. Right. I don't Ugh. know things. So after we uh, finished our 
pod last week, Mm -hmm. we watched what was possibly the worst movie ever. It was. I mean, it's at least it's up there. Oh, and we, but I, I loved the experience because we laughed so. I thought I was gonna pee my pants. We watched the movie Cats. Oh my god. Uh, with its stellar cast, and mm-hmm. it really does have a stellar cast, but it's still a terrible, terrible movie. Yep. I mean, honest to God, first of all, what is the plot? Girl, what is The it, plot what? is... Now, I, because I'm so curious about, did it really have anything to do with the original book, which was called Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats. Yeah, yeah. By T.S. Eliot. Yeah. So I checked the book out on my library app. And not only does it have everything to do with the book, some of the songs are actually just the lyrics or the, really? the words to his poetry. Okay. Like the jellical cat yeah. thing. Because girl, remember halfway through I said, what the fuck? I have a girl, jellical first cat. First of all, let's pause this bitch. I have questions. <laughs> what's a <laughs> jellical cat? First of all, and what are they doing? And what's what's heavy heavy side? The heavy side lair. Or does, do they just float away in a balloon for the rest of well, eternity? We saw that at the end they do indeed. Girl, so they what, hop in a hot air balloon and just float through the sky. And you're and... reborn as a cloud? I don't get it. I don't know. The whole know. movie though. I think they. Just, I think it's a trick. <laughs> yeah. I think they put them in the hot air balloon, send them off to this you know place where they're supposed to be reborn, yeah. and they just die out there somewhere in an air balloon. They're never seen again. Yeah. I think that's really what happens. Honestly, that's it. <laughs> because <laughs> One there's no explanation. No. Nope. It's just like, oh, we never liked this right. cat anyway. Well, and like, my here's why were they such bitches to Grizabella? Grizabella? Bird, Bertha? Grizabella, the glamour cat. <laughs> yeah, why? Were they so mean to her? It's And like uh, when I looked it up, they said it's because, oh, well, she was like a glamour cat. She thought she was, you know, uppity, hoity-toity. But then you're just like an awful snatch to her the whole time. Yeah. I liked your thought that maybe she was a sex worker. I, potentially. You and know so they I mean? were all like, ugh. Ew, gross. We're so better and than that her. that does not age well. Do you no, know what I mean? No, no, it does not. And um, I don't understand. So I have seen the stage play. <laughs> Which also, I sat there mostly going, what the fuck's going on? Honestly. But I don't recall the character of McCavity, or as I like to call him, Phil McCavity. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch! I was hysterical when you said that. Phil McCavity. <laughs> Ew! Hello, yeah. police. But I don't recall him being a magical cat who could make other cats disappear and make them appear on the Thames River tied to a barge. Yeah, I didn't... I, I don't I don't know where that even came from. You know what I have known, though? For the only things I've known about Cats musicals, how horrifying it is. And um, Magical Mr. Mistopheles, because I remember Grandma saying that when I was younger. Or someone said it, yeah. and then it was just stuck in my head. And then the song memory, yeah. right? But, like, nothing else. Like everybody knows that song. Right, because it's a brilliant song, right? Yeah. But I'm also, like... What the the worst part to me, girl, was when they were all showing affection and they would rub noses or rub cheeks. I was like, "This is nauseating." Because well, then they're rubbing like into each other's necks and I, was, like, oh, in such a way that it's, it's like, "This is weird." It's like weirdly sexual, and I was like uncomfortable. And your cats, yeah, and I don't off. need to see any of that. Yeah, I uh, yeah, it was yeah. a fucking weird. And every actor ever in the history of life was in it. And I said, "Por qué? Like, why are they here?" Well, I really think. That Dame Judi Dench mm. and uh, Idris. Sir Ian McKellen okay. oh my and God. Idris Elba. Yeah. And, you know, these. I think someone tricked them. They had to have, right? I think their agent said, you know, we're going to do this amazing movie. Yeah. And whatever. And then they get there and it's fucking cats. And it's like, we're going to put you in a in a body, a unitard. Yep. Paint your face. Stone in. And glue some hair on you. <sighs> yep. Ta-da! Honestly, honestly. It's like... But Judy, we're gonna put you in a giant fur coat. I know, so you will look stunning. Oh my god, stunning! Or you will look really stupid. Probably that one. So all of them. I recommend that you get high and watch that movie. That's the only way to watch that movie. I'm gonna say, uh, if that's not too much, that that's what we did. Yeah, (laughs) and and it was beautiful. I I couldn't have had a better time. Oh, absolutely not. No, I mean, I literally was in tears. Yes. I had to have tissues to wipe my Girl, face my, because I was crying so my hard. My hair part was randomly, you would just say, 
I don't think I'm high, as you're hysterical and <laughs> crying. And they said, no, honey, you're not, you're, you're right. No, pumpkin. No, you're doing great. The fact that you can't close your mouth. <laughs> completely. Well, whatever. one time I was like, la- you made me laugh so hard that I'm crying, but I can't close my mouth, so I'm just actively drooling. <laughs> and they said, thank God no one else is here. Uh, right? How embarrassing. Right? How but embarrassing. What a great time. It was such a good time. So we spent that entire day, after we did our podcast, we yep. watched four movies. We did. So we started with Cats, and I don't know how you could top that. Honestly, and it's so funny to me that we both decided, yeah, you know yeah, what, we should have Cats. cats. <laughs> what a great Because I think there's no other way to watch it than high. No. But yeah. I also learned that like when the movie The Wall came out Pink Floyd The mm, Wall yeah but that is also the only way to watch that movie and because I didn't do drugs ever yeah. like I was a little miss straight and narrow right uh, I watched that movie and I was like what the actual fuck is happening <laughs> that movie is so bizarre and all my friends were like you have to watch that movie high Otherwise, it doesn't make any You're sense. All, oh, copy And I'm that. like, so does it make sense high? It's like, no, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's and fun. It's like, well, so what? Yeah. It's and magical. it's more the music, I yeah, guess, but sure. whatever. So Cats, same. Here's my recommendation. Terrible movie. Watch it high. Uh, agreed. Snaps for do you. Do a couple edibles. Do whatever you like do to do. Do whatever you're going to do. And then sit down, watch that movie, laugh till you cry. But just <laughs> expect it to be terrible and yeah. to not make any sense. No. Uh, n- not a lick of sense. No. 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 And that was, I think, my favorite part, uh, is that none of it made a fucking bit of sense. Well, and because uh, it's like a 16-hour movie, and so, yeah. like, every half an hour, one of us would say, what the fuck is going on? Because literally, <laughs> I had no idea, oh, but no. it was brilliant. It was mm, yeah. brilliant. Yeah, chef's kiss. It was yeah, so good. So, so And then good. we watched uh, The Heat. Uh, which it Melissa was McCarthy movie. and Sandra Bullock, yeah. which we had both seen before, mm-hmm. but uh, we needed more laughter. Yeah. And that movie is intentionally funny. Yep, I know. And I have after I watch the movie every time for days later, I say, "Who the fuck are you? I'll kill her and beat you to death with her dead body." <laughs> Well, because, you know, you that. know, it's yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you have your own phone? Who am I, the Queen of England? <laughs> It's just oh, funny. It is. Yeah, and it's then, good times. What do we want? Buffy? And then we watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The movie, not the TV not show. Not the TV show. I've never seen the TV show. And for those of you who are shocked by that, sorry. Yeah. I love the movie love. because it is so silly. Yeah. And yeah. It's I'm sorry Rome. Christy Swanson turned into a douchebag. Honestly. Older, but... Well, in rewatching it, Ricky Lake. Who's, I, I know. And ben, Affleck. ben Affleck. I noticed. And I said, oh my God, look at these children. I know, but a little Miss... Uh, Two-time Oscar winner Hillary Duff. Hillary Duff. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary Swank. Wrong Hillary. Lizzie McGuire. Like, like, and Hillary Duff can never win an Oscar. Hillary Swank. <sighs> and, it's like, and she's such a vapid little cheerleader that is so get, funny. Get out of my facial. Like, all right, girl, calm down. Uh, that is so five minutes ago. It's retro. I know, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Anyway. And then we watched the movie uh, Don't, Don't Worry, Worry, Darling. Yeah. Real which good. Chris Pine and Florence Pugh... Bro. And Harry Styles? Harry Styles. Yeah. I It was really good. It was a good movie. It's a weird. Weird. And it's yeah. one of those ones that there's twists and turns that you're like, what is happening here? And it makes you question everything. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But I thought it was really well done. Yeah. It was a good story. It was it was something new. Sure. But yep. it also, I think it also borrowed some concepts from other movies. Oh, yeah. But it also did it in a way that felt fresh and new. Yeah. So, right. Well, that's like... And by that time, we were no longer high, so we were uh, fully able to, I think, grasp as much as was graspable. Graspable, yeah. Because that is a word. Yeah. Yeah, Graspable. yeah. Um, but it was a good day. Just we ate food. We went on a drive that Didn't morning. We know. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we went on a drive that morning. Kind of before we did the pod, we went and drove to Starbucks, which is literally in the same. Park <laughs> <as our hotel. laughs> we did. We drove to the Starbucks, but then went out for a little drive, looked yeah. at more ocean. Uh huh. More ocean. Beautiful yeah. houses. Beautiful houses. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then went to the store to get some food, some snacks, and yeah. drink. beverages. More. <laughs> yeah. After we did a little hotel breakfast, which mm-hmm. was. Uh, average at best. At best. My favorite thing, let me tell you, the first day we had breakfast there, y'all, oh. <laughs> at the table, y'all, this is not very good. And I'm all, girl, shut up. They can hear us. Girl, well, my voice does not carry, they... so nobody can hear me. But <laughs> I was like, why are the scrambled eggs square? Well, why do they have corners? You know. I've never seen that before. <laughs> I don't know where they came from, <laughs> but I said, thank you. Yeah. Your slop I mean, is it good. Was, it was protein. Yeah. Yeah. We hope. Yeah, I hope. I hope yeah. it was actually eggs. It was egg it flavored egg-ish. fluff. <laughs> egg yep. flavored squares. It was delightful. It was something. It was a little cube. 
Yeah, but it was the beach overall, such a good time. Oh, and then we went to our, um, ooh, uh, what is it? Year round Halloween Christmas store. Yeah. And got some ornaments. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, so we had a good time. Yeah, it was mostly just nice to get away. Yeah, and we mostly did nothing. Which is exactly what we meant Ate to do. Ate food, watch movies. Relax. Did nothing. We had a good time. We laughed. We let loose. We got crazy. Yeah. Um, all the things that we should have done, we did. Yeah, and then over the weekend, we went to see the new Little Mermaid. Oh my god. So good. So good. First I... of all, it's just, if you just cinematically, it's gorgeous. Beautiful. <laughs> but I love the fact that the cast... Is so multicultural. Yes. Love that. It wasn't just a bunch of white mermaids in the, you know, no. south, uh, southern seas. Yeah. With all white people. Right. Even the mermaids were like, because like her sisters, there were white girls and Latino and Asian, Asian girl, and black girls. Black girls. And well, I was like, and I love, I love that. this. I was telling Gavin, I said, I love that because they're supposed to be like the seven seas, right? Doesn't it make the most sense to have them be more culturally diverse than have them all look the same if they're from different regions of the world? Right, you know? exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, but one of the... So I actually was reading in the, the Queer News this morning that um, uh, the director of The Little Mermaid and his name, Rob Marshall? Sure. I want to say my good friend Rob Marshall oh, from Robbie. Disney. Rob um, is that right? Where am I? Yes, Rob, Rob Minkoff. Oh, same thing. Marshall so, Rob Minkoff. Guy. So Rob Minkoff, when they made the original Little Mermaid back in 1989, was the one who said, you know, let's change this design for Ursula because Ursula apparently was a, originally set to look like Joan Collins from Dynasty. Oh. She was thin, okay. high cheekbones, very mm-hmm. like, you know, bitch, yeah. kind of whatever. That, yeah, yeah. Because as... At that time, Dynasty was huge, uh-huh. and she was, you know, yeah, everyone's yeah. favorite bitch. Same. So, but it was, it just wasn't working. Okay. And Rob Minkoff was like, how about this? And he brought in these pictures of Divine. Ooh, yeah. And said, how about this? And the guy who was directing it, um, I can't remember, whatever, he was like, oh my god, this is perfect. Mm-hmm. And he didn't really know who Divine was. Sure. But he loved the, the image and he loved the idea of making her this, like, yeah. you know, glamorous, scary, you know, whatever, yeah. over-the-top character. And so the man, uh, Rob Minkoff, who was the illustrator, one of the illustrators at the time, directed the new one. Oh, my so, God. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I thought that was super cool. So, but he is the one who was like, um, how about this? Yeah. And so it has really stood the test of time. I love that. And used a uh, queer icon. Yeah. Because God knows Divine, uh, if you don't know who Divine is, well, I don't know who you are because yeah. Divine is I, is queer legend. Oh my you God. Know. Yeah. Yep. Did all these movies and always played a woman. I mean, usually a pretty terrifying woman. Wasn't it, didn't she play two roles in Hairspray, the original? She did. She, she played a man the original Hairspray. She, in the Hairspray. 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 <laughs> uh, as she played, but she also did in, um, um, oh my God, Female Trouble. Mm, she also okay. played the man who that's raped right. her. Right. Oh my God, that's right. <laughs> but yes, she played um, a man in Hairspray who was going to shut down mm-hmm. the TV station. Yeah. Because they were not going to, they were not going to mix it up there and have the black children dancing with the white children. No. Uh-uh. But she also did all these movies with John Waters. Uh, Which I think we've talked about before. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But I love that Disney was like, oh yeah, we love oh, her. we love Divine. She seems amazing. So Let's do Divine. This. Divine is a Disney princess. Oh my God. And how much do you love that? Well, she's uh, a Disney villain. Girl, that's even better. But she's, one of my favorites. Oh, agreed. Because she's just so yeah. awful. And, and I want to say that, you know, I love Melissa McCarthy, right? Love, 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 oh, love. Oh, yeah. But I don't, I mean, I, Ursula's a big part. You know what I mean? Ursula's yeah. huge. And it's not that I didn't think she was capable, but I was like, is she going to deliver what I want to see? Oh, she sure did, though. And did she? Girl, she fucked it up. I oh, was I like, know. you're I so good. She was evil. She was quippy. It was, it was so good. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Hallie, uh, Hallie Bailey, him. who played Ariel, was beautiful and perfect. And you know what? Having a black Ariel didn't ruin the movie for what? me at all. Isn't that crusty? Crusty. Well, I'm, 
I am personally shocked because everybody knows mermaids are white. Oh, uh, every single one of them. Yeah, all white. the real mermaids. Uh, all the very <laughs> all real, very real mermaids. All white. Uh, you know, Hans Christian Andersen, when he wrote the book, said, "Please make sure this when it's made into a movie, she's mm-hmm. a white girl." He probably didn't even know other cultures existed. Let's keep it real. <laughs> I mean, he was a white man yeah. living in a white country, mm-hmm. but Hans, Hans, oh, Hans, Hans Christian Andersen. Yeah, yeah. That's just, that, the real story is super fucked up. Uh, yeah, Ariel turns into sea foam at the end. Oh, she had it coming. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you see what she did? She broke the rules. <laughs> she broke the rules. She became human. I mean, really, she gave up to being a super cool mermaid to be to a the dude. human. Come okay, on. and that's the other thing is you know that I have like extreme philosophobia, and so I'm sitting there watching it, showing like is crashing that fear of philosophy. Yeah, not. Not philosophobia, bitch. <laughs> um, but I'm sitting there, there's crashing waves and all these scenes from under the water watching Prince Eric sink and I start like sweating. My palm gets sweaty, I feel like. <laughs> and Gavin's like squeezing my leg like, it's okay, it's not It's okay, good. we're not really in the ocean. We're, we're gonna be fine. But it doesn't you matter. Breathe, you're good. Breathe. I'm, like, I'm drowning. I'm drowning. Yeah. yeah. Luckily, you didn't. I didn't you drown. You made it through the movie mm-hmm. without drowning. I did my best. Because, you know, well, I didn't realize until just a couple days before it would see it that they were also, that they'd released it in 3D as well. Oh. And I was like, uh, no. No. Especially no, for poor little Annika. In yeah. 3D, she would have died. Died. I would have had a heart attack. <laughs> She'd have been like, we're really out of the water. Yeah. Get me out of here. <laughs> yeah, the rest of the people in the theater going, what is wrong with her? All right. Meth head. Get <laughs> stepping. <laughs> I know. It's like she just has to stand up. She's eight feet tall. She'll be right out of the water. Yeah, she'd be fine. But what's underneath the water? Mm. That's that. What lies beneath? Girl, oh. that is the question, is it not? It is. Well, that's why when like I've talked to people, like uh, clients or friends, when they're like, "I'm going to Hawaii," it's like awesome. Mm-hmm. That sounds like it doesn't sound like anything I would want to do. Yeah. Because they're like, well, I'm going to go snorkeling. No. Mm-mm. I'm not going to be swimming around and touching sea creatures and stuff. Especially when they're big. There's like sea turtles and other things that are big. And I'm like, no. No. Mm-mm. no. And these are wild animals and I don't want to be anywhere near them. Only, Not only because I have some fear of that, but it's also because we shouldn't be in there, up in their stuff. Because, you know, leave no. it alone. No, right. I... Plus, white people have pretty much destroyed the culture of... Hawaii. Mm-hmm. So. Well, the culture of Hawaii, though, is hanging on, girl. She's like, try me. <laughs> like, bitch, I'll kill you, dad. I know, but they're sure trying. They sure are. I know. I um, know so many Hawaiians, native, uh, you know, who are yeah. native to Hawaii, can't even afford to live there. Oh, yeah. Because they've been priced out from gentrification and the whole yeah. tourism. Yeah, I feel like people should... I don't know. I'm very radical, though, and I don't think people should be going to Hawaii. I feel like the only way you should go to Hawaii is if you're invited by somebody who lives in Hawaii and is Hawaiian. Yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of just, like, coming to their home and taking over shit. Yeah, I'm not. That's silly goes. I'm not going. No. <coughs> anyway. So, but speaking of traveling. Yeah. Uh, We're going to be traveling. The Human Rights Campaign joined the NAACP, the League of United Latin American Citizens, the Florida Immigrant Coalition and Equality Florida in issuing travel or relocation warnings for the Sunshine State, one of the most popular states for tourists to visit in the U.S. <clears throat> so they've actually come out and said, you probably shouldn't. Yeah. Don't go to Florida. Yeah. Because of all the new laws, the anti-queer uh, laws that are being passed, it's mm-hmm. not a safe place no. for queer folk. Mm-hmm. It's also not a safe place for uh, people who are trying to immigrate. Mm-mm. It's just not. It's just not. Yes. And so the, literally all these organizations got together and said, don't, you know, don't, just don't, don't go, go to Florida. Yeah. Because it will not work out well for you. No. It's so horrifying. Yeah. I saw that and I was like, yipes. If they're actually putting out travel advisors for you to not Well, and it go. has, I mean, a couple, because like the NAACP and uh, the HRC had put out um, travel bans like, Oh, oh, like a month ago. Yeah. They started. And now, and then everyone was like, well, let's all jump on this bandwagon and let's all form like a consensus to, right. to tell right. our people to not travel to Just Florida. Just stay the fuck home. Don't go to Florida. Yeah. Well, I know because I, we talked about the other day that the kids keep saying, I want to go back to Disney World. I want to go to Florida. It's like, no. No. It's not safe. Mm-mm. And uh, nope. the more that the bigots take over, it's like the less I want to have anything to do with it. Mm-hmm. Yes, I would love to go back to Disney World. Actually, I didn't love Disney World. Mm-hmm. But... There are some things to experience there that you can't experience in Disneyland. Yeah. It was more that I want to go to Universal 
Florida because mm -hmm. the world of Harry Potter is so much bigger there and mm -hmm. there's so much more to see and it looks really cool. But I, it's not so top of my list that I'm no. going to be sad if I don't ever get to go. Plus, it probably puts money in, you know, mm -hmm. J.K. Rowling's pockets, and I don't want to do that. I know. Um, yeah. I do that's... struggle with that. Yeah. Because I, I know. no matter what a cunt she is, I love Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and know. the the one at Universal um, in Tom. Hollywood yeah. is it's still really cool. It's much smaller. It's about half the size of the one in Florida. Yeah. But it's still super cool. Yeah. And the kids had a great time. Uh, my problem, of course, is being a fat person, is none of the rides there are meant for me. Mm. They're all That's like, horrible. oh, no, no, girl, you can't ride any of the rides. Uh, other than the, the tram that takes you on the tour, which I could yeah. fit. I fit in that. Sure. That was lucky. Um, I actually, I think I did two rides, maybe. Because uh, I also did this 3D Simpsons roller coaster. Oh, okay. That was kind of barf making. Because if it's a 3D roller coaster, obviously they can do things that are much scarier, yeah. much faster, much whatever. Because it's all just with your eyeballs. And oh, I'm like, like I'm going to die. And I died. And, and then what? I died. And I'm dead. And then now. they revived me. Thank God. Oh my God. Now you're a Simpson. Uh, speaking of places that I don't want to travel. Yeah. Uh, Uganda. Oh. Now, I never really thought of traveling to Uganda, but um, this person named Delevi Kwan Kwagala. Okay. Now, if I mispronounce it, I apologize. But Delevi Kwagala is a non-binary photographer and activist who has documented realities of queer life in Uganda for about seven years. And now, uh, the president of Uganda has signed into law an anti-homosexuality bill, which uh, president his name is President... Again, I probably won't say his name right. Yoweri Museveni, okay. and sorry, uh, and it says that it makes their artwork or their and their existence punishable by jail or even death. Jesus. Since the law was approved uh, by this president in March, um, Delevy has been crowdfunding and campaigning to su get support through this dark period because now. The whole queer community down there is in peril. Yeah. You know, which is terrifying. It's like the queer community is pretty well hidden anyway. Mm -hmm. But because Delevy was uh, assigned female at birth, they could go to jail for just wearing pants. Yeah, that's horrible. I mean, who, what? You know? Yeah. It feels to me... Like the world is now suddenly spinning backwards. Yeah, girl. You know, it's like we're trying, we're taking away rights. We're trying to make life harder for people. Yeah. What happened to live and let live? What happened? Mm -hmm. You know, like the seventies, that movement. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying that the time was great because stuff was still fucked up. But the idea, the hippie movement, yeah, was that everybody should just be free to be themselves, to live and let live, to mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of it was the whole free love movement, which yeah. was. You know, fuck whoever you want. We don't care. Yeah, who cares? You know, right? because it's your body. Do what you want. Yeah. I don't know how we got so far away from that mm. that it's now like, oh no, you can't. You can only do what I think is. Right. You know, and it's my opinion is more important than your rights mm -hmm. or your, it's like, what? How, how did we get there? I wish people, like, especially legislators or just people who are so anti-everything, I wish that they loved themselves and their families more than they hated, like, us and our families. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. Like, why can't you just love your people more and hate the people you don't like less? Like, that doesn't make any sense. You're putting so much energy into something that you will never win. And we had this conversation because progress will always win, right? Not maybe it now, but look at all of... Look how much the United States specifically has changed since, like, the early 20th century. Like, there's yeah. so much is different, right? Even, like, socially. I mean, with civil rights acts and, you know, um, like, the end of slavery and black folks getting more rights and then, you know, indigenous people. Everyone getting, becoming, the equitable structure is actually, was equalizing to a degree. Granted, it'll never probably be equal. But now we're in this place where it's just like reverting back so hardcore. But it makes me think like, you're all dumb. All of you hardcore, right, like, 
Christian nationalists, your your stance won't be the lasting stance. You know what I no. mean? It right. won't. Well, because I think that it really is the grasping, mm-hmm. you know, of straws. It's like we are losing our grasp on everything. You know, as the queer community becomes more prominent and as it becomes more accepted, mm-hmm. it's like, well, this is against our lifestyle, and you're, you know, and so they're fighting with all they can, mm-hmm. and they have. So they have these organizations that aren't terribly huge, yeah. but do pack a wallop. Like, um, this whole shit that's happened at Target mm. and a couple other places. But they were literally threatening their employees mm-hmm. because they carry stuff for Pride, which they do every year. They have stuff year-round, but around Pride, they always put out more shit. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, whatever. But this man, Matt Walsh, mm. who... Toxic. Yeah. His whole thing is, I want to make it uncomfortable for anybody to do anything that supports queer people. And so he has his own network and all of his little followers, his three million or however many followers, I don't know how many he has, it doesn't matter. His millions of followers who rock the boat and go, well, you know, we're going to come fuck up your store. We're going to fuck up your employees. We're going to do what we have to, to get queer stuff out of there. It's like, so you're threatening violence because they're selling... Mm -hmm. A pride shirt. Yep. So you're so threatened that the idea that Target carries... Like for my birthday, I or Mother Day, I think, I got... It's hard to remember. They're a week apart. Um, I got this kit of lip glosses that are pride. Mm-hmm. So it's just rainbow colored lip gloss. So and, you mean they're just a color? <laughs> so yeah. And it says pride on it. Yeah. And then a couple um, like little tiny travel bags, makeup bags... That also were part of their pride collection. How is that threatening to you? Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, if you don't like it, don't buy it. Don't yeah. support it. But threatening people? That's so that stupid. is fucked up. Mm-hmm. You know, and they did the same thing with Anheuser-Busch when they collaborated with uh, Dylan Mulvaney. Mm-hmm. They d- did the same thing with Disney when Disney was like, I'm not bound to your don't say gay law in Florida. No. This is bullshit. Yeah. You know, and so... His job, his he said, his goal is to make pride toxic for brands. It's so like, stupid to me. You're fucking toxic, dude. Yeah, like, it's so stupid. Like, again, your life is so shitty. Like, your life is so unhappy that you have to focus on making other people, specifically marginalized people, more miserable. Exactly. Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Like, it's really just patheticism. Like, you're just super pathetic. And you have nothing else. Like, that's that's your whole personality, is being a hateful bigot. Like, that's right. stupid, bro. Like So, what do you... Where do you put positive into the world? Yeah, well, he probably doesn't. He's a man, so he probably thinks that's how he does it, by right. being a man. By being a man and trying to make everybody see things your way. It's like, if you just said, you know, I don't like this, mm-hmm. uh, I'm recommending you just don't support Target. Okay, sure. that's fine. Yeah, say whatever you want. Fine. Don't go to Target. Don't buy their shit. Don't buy Pride stuff. Don't go to Pride. Don't bother. Just stay the fuck away and leave yeah. it alone. It's not for you. Mm-mm. Clearly, it's not for you. Just like Coachella is not for me. Right. Or what's the other one? Burning Man is not for me. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go, well, you shouldn't have that because I don't like it. Yeah. I think outdoor festivals are terrible because they're outside and outside is not for me. Yeah. But it's like, I don't care. You know, that's just dumb. Do whatever you want. I don't like it. Yeah. So, I don't go. Mm Mm-hmm. But I don't dislike it so much that I don't think other people should go. No. You know? Or it's like when one of my friends was like, for vacation, we're going hiking and rock climbing. Yeah, it doesn't sound fun to me. Not for me. But I'm certainly not going to be like, oh, you shouldn't do that. There are things I think people shouldn't do, like go on mission trips. But that's very different. I'm not going to tell you to not go to a festival because I don't like it. The only way I think people should go on mission trips is if their mission is literally to help dig wells Mm. and to build living facilities, you know, homes and whatever, schools. If you're going to say, you know, if without Jesus you're going to hell, your life is doomed, your religion is garbage, Mm -hmm. then stay the fuck out. Mm -hmm. But if you're going literally to help people, that, yeah, sure. Sure. Go. But keep your proselytizing to yourself. So much of that is just so tied together. It absolutely is. It's not. It absolutely is. So another place, don't want to go. I mean, I don't want to go anyway. Yeah. South Dakota. Ew, what the fuck? Who wants so the to South go? Dakota governor, Christy Nome. What a dumb bitch. Right. Yard Nome. Yeah. Uh, it calls for colleges to ban drag shows and to eliminate preferred pronouns. 
That's so stupid. And she's also set up a whistleblower hotline for complaints related to colleges and universities. And what she has said is on campus, I, this is the, this kind of sets it all up for me right here is she said, uh, and I quote, on campuses across the country, students have been taught the importance of diversity and equity and given access to safe spaces, which sounds terrible, doesn't yeah. it? Uh-huh. Instead of learning to tolerate the disagreement, discomfort, and dissent that they will experience in the real world. So she, we don't want you to have nice things. But <laughs> she just like lives, like her real world is a microcosm of fucking South Dakota or whatever, North Dakota, right. who knows. But like, that's not the real world because the real world, according to small town Dakota in person versus an Oregonian is different versus a Californian right. is different. But her problem is that people have been taught the importance of diversity and equity. Mm-hmm. You know that makes you sound horrible. And just dumb. Because diversity and equity is bad stuff. We don't want... What? That's so ignorant. It is so It doesn't ignorant. make any sense it either. It makes you sound so stupid and mm-hmm. ignorant. Yeah. Yeah. So nescient. Mm-hmm. That's many words. Yeah, I know. Nescient. Absolutely nescient. Which, by the way, just means really stupid. I know. I've heard it twice in a week now. Love it. Love it. Uh, hate her. Hate this bitch. Yeah. yeah. Honestly. The gov- How did she get to be governor? Who's voting for these idiots? Other idiots. Other idiots. Girl, Oof. and I just feel like, again, you're right, people are grasping at straws. Like, y'all lost because queer, gay people can get married now, and you're like, well, what else do we have? Right. What else can we fucking lobby against? Okay. And now you're just like, queer existence. Speaking of gay people getting married, I, I, one of the stories in looking up queer news for the week, which made me just so happy, and I actually knew this because uh, Hannah Gatsby... Do you know who mm-hmm. they are? I love her. Uh, non-binary queer oh. um, comedian. Yeah. From New Zealand. New Zealand. Yeah. Just did their third Netflix special. I love it. Yeah. And talks about in their Netflix special how uh, they tricked a Christian baker into making them a gay wedding cake. I'm obsessed. And I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. So they made this cake, or had them make this cake, that is absolutely not a traditional wedding cake. So it's this blue cake that has like a shark coming out of the top of it. So it's jaws wide mm. open. And then swimming right here into the jaws are two little otters holding hands. Oh my God. <laughs> but that was their wedding cake. I'm obsessed. I love, I love that. I yeah. thought that was hilarious. And Hannah said, specifically the reason they did it was to trick this Christian baker into making a gay wedding cake. I love that. And I'm like, oh, love, love, love. Yeah. Uh, by so the way, the, all, I think all three of their specials are still on Netflix. Yeah. The first one is called Nanette. It destroyed me. Yep. The yeah. second one is called Douglas. Okay. And I, Which was named after their dog. Okay. And I don't remember what the new one's called, but it is so good. They're so really I watched funny. it the other night, laughed... So much. It's well, so good. And Nanette fucked me up because it's like comedy, 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 and then real world life traumatizing experience they went through. But yes. then obviously, like all in like a cocoon of comedy. It is crazy. And it well, is except for the deep. last probably 15, 20 minutes, however long, that there's not a laugh to be had in there no. because they took that whole thing and did all this funny, 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 funny. And then at the end, turned it around and said, and this is the real world shit that I went through as a queer person. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh my God. Yeah. And turned the whole thing on its ear, basically. Yeah. But very powerful. So I good. loved it. So I was, Yeah, I was shook. But it was so good. Shook. I was shook. Yes. Yeah. I was shooketh. Um, speaking of queer specials, I also just watched, uh, as I told you, I watched Wanda Sykes' mm-hmm. new comedy special, yeah. which is super good. It's, her first one since the pandemic, because the last one she had done was in 2019, and it was called Not Normal. Mm, okay. And this one's called I'm an Entertainer. And, uh, yeah, super good. So take a few, you know, take a few hours, go watch some comedy on the Netflix. On the Netflix. Get your queer comedy on. Yeah, girl. Yeah. I'm into it's it. All, it's all super good. It is. And yeah. I think that is all of my queer news for oh this Oh my god, week. we're only 45 minutes into the I episode know. and we just did <laughs> our news hour. Well, you know, mm-hmm. one of the things I know that you had suggested that we talk about was burnout. Mm. And now oh. the whole reason that we went to the beach last week, because I mm-hmm. completely burned out. Yeah. 
I needed to recharge my batteries. I needed to get away. I needed to have no responsibilities for a couple of days. And that was so perfect. Because yeah. I actually uh, had no responsibilities for two days. I didn't have to worry about taking care of my children or my mother or anything else. My house. You know, nothing. Yeah. You know, like, because in a normal day, I take care of my children, my husband, my mother, my dogs, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, and it... Sometimes is overwhelming and it's a lot. Yeah. And I know a lot of people have really been experiencing burnout. Mm-hmm. One of the things I really thought was interesting that has happened since the pandemic was something called, um, it's like called soft quitting. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is where you're not actually quitting your job, but you're quitting doing shit that is not a part of your job. Part of your job. Yep. Like, um, Annika, I'm going to need you to stay two extra hours today because, you know, Bozo Jones didn't show up for... No. Yeah. No. Or I'm going to need you to be available all weekend for emails, Mm -hmm. even though you're off work. No. Mm -mm. And people telling their bosses, I would be willing to do this for time and a half. Mm -hmm. Or I'm not willing to do that because my workday ends at this time. Yep. And when my workday ends, my workday ends and I'm not working. So no, I will not answer emails. I will not have my phone on. Or I will not answer my phone. Or whatever. And I love that. Yeah. Because that's how it always should have been to begin with. And people have this kind of feeling that if you're not doing that other stuff, you're not ambitious. Right. If you're not going above and beyond for a job that doesn't pay you above and beyond. We have this really fucked up thing in our culture um, where it's like everything has to be productive. We always have to be productive. No matter what. Our days off. The days we're relaxing. we're so encultured and ingrained in this culture to be like, what do I have to do? What do I have to pay? Where do I have to go? All the things constantly, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And so if you're not productive, you're lazy. And you're not and if you're lazy, then you don't have value. Because especially in like a capitalist society where like we're all commodified for what we can do to yeah. produce more. Um, if we don't do that, if we don't go above and beyond, if we don't want to be productive all the time, then we aren't fit enough for society. Does yeah. that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And so, I know for me personally, because of the way I was raised, yeah. that on my days off, uh, when I want to just go, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to sit, mm-hmm. I'm going to watch Netflix. Yeah. I'm going to do a couple things. Like today specifically, I was like, my one chore that I'm going to do today, make sure I get it done, is cleaning off my bar. Yeah. Which doesn't sound like much, but you should have seen it. But girl, I honey have, girl. I have... <laughs> Two children, a husband, you know, whatever. Well, all and you say a pile their shit up there. You say a bar. Um, it's like a kitchen. It's a kitchen island. A kitchen it's, island. It's yes. large. Yeah. Yeah, it is large. It's probably what four feet by six feet. Three probably. feet by six feet. Yeah. And it was just packed with everybody's crap that they, yeah. you know, bring in, sit down there, and then forget they have it. Mm-hmm. And so it starts looking like you know an episode of Hoarders. Yeah. And I'm just like, bra. So that was my one chore today, and I was like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do my podcast. And that's probably fucking it. Sure. And then I'm going to pro- find TV to watch or something. Yeah. Uh, although I'm going to say I've watched all the episodes of all the things I'm watching. So I was like, I need new things. Uh, anyhow. <laughs> but back to because of the way I was raised. Mm-hmm. I sometimes will sit there and be like, should I be? Yep. Should I be doing something else? Yep. yep should yep. I be? Should I get up? Should I clean something? Should I move something? Should I, I, I'm sure there's something I should be doing. And... Uh, that's been, that is a struggle for well, me. And so that's like, that's always been my issue. People say like, oh, they have such a great work ethic. I think a great work ethic would knowing a work-life balance. I don't think killing yourself or working above and beyond every day or not taking a day off or not having a sick day or any of that. I don't think that makes you smarter, better, stronger, right? I think that's going to burn yourself out and kill you quicker. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think that more or less people have like an overcompensation with their work ethic. They use that as a way to be like, but I did all these things. Look at all the things I've done. And like, that's fine. Um, But as a person I did, I mean, not necessarily for a job, but I've like, you know, I've talked about this a lot, but in my twenties, I did a lot of shit, you know what I mean? And since 2020 girl, I've been like tapped out the pandemic and like, Working at working the whole time and going to school in my senior year and doing all the things, I'm just so tired and it makes me feel nuts because I feel bitchy and I feel irritable like regularly. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and I think it starts to, and I think this is a reason why I told you I feel insecure, which is a part, we'll have this podcast another day, but I think it all plays into it. Like my mental fatigue is so high Mm -hmm. and I don't want to, you know what I mean? I don't want to go to work. I don't want to finish school. I mean, I do, but I'm just so over it. Like I'm so over everything. Like, and my life is good. Do you know what I mean? Like my life is not bad, but it's been so much for so many years and like, balancing so many things and going through my own shit and going to therapy and trying to figure out how to like continue. I'm just like tapped out. And I told you last Sunday I was at work and I was having a rough fucking day. And I told my store manager, like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I was like, I'm over it. Um, just because it's been so much and it's a lot of responsibility. I mean, and granted I work at Starbucks as a supervisor, but just like one more fucking thing where I have to be the most competent person yeah. in the store, you know? And like, and I was telling Gavin on the way to work cause he likes to drive me to work because he's a sweet, sweet man. Um, but how I was like, I could, I can just pay for my last two classes. I don't, I don't need to work at Starbucks. I don't need to do this. I'm so fucking over it. I don't need to do it. Um, and of course I know that I, that's pro- that won't happen. But I'm just so. And yes, it, but being the sweet, sweet man, what was his response? He said, "Okay, we'll figure it out." And I yeah. said, "You son of a bitch! <laughs> Wait, you're supposed to say nope. You gotta work. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Keep stay going. Working. Fuck it along. Yeah. Keep stay the course, girls. Yes. Um, I know that is the problem. However, marrying a sweet, supportive man, because I remember when I was still doing my show and I was over it, and I had put in my retirement date, and I was like. Here's when I'm going to retire. Yeah. I'm doing my show. And uh, I would be, it would be Saturday night and I'm like, I'm supposed to get ready now to go do my show and I'm just exhausted. I don't want to do it because I had already worked a full day at the Ugh. salon. Yeah. You know, and I would go tell T, I'm like, I don't really want to do my show tonight. And he's like, then don't. Yeah. No. No. This is where you're supposed to say, sorry about it. You, you punk. committed yeah. to this. Yep. You have you know, 12 more, or whatever it yep. was, you know. Yeah. And I was like, but, uh, and he'd be like, then don't go. Right. Stay home. We would rather you stayed home. Well, I would rather I stayed home too. Yeah. Which is why I finally, after 20 years, was like, I'm quitting. And I'm all done. Yeah. Yeah. I get because it. it was like, I was, at that point in my 40s, I was 43. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I've been doing this for a long time. And mama and over it. Mama tired. Um, and I also wanted to stay home because we were fostering children then. Yeah. And I was like, and... Soon, I'm going to be actually having my own children. Yeah. So, yeah. I need to not. <laughs> I need to not. Um, well, and when I met him, I had three jobs. Yeah, girl. And it was like, Mm-mm. I should only have one job. Mm-hmm. But I had also had a deadbeat boyfriend yeah. who couldn't fucking keep a job. No. Or wouldn't. No. I don't know. Couldn't, wouldn't, whatever. It doesn't matter. <sighs> it doesn't matter. With him, they were synonymous, girl. He yeah. wouldn't, couldn't. It's and I, thing. so I had three jobs. Mm-hmm. And after T and I got together, I quit the first one, which was a part-time one, working at uh, the jewelry counter at Myron Frank. Oh, right. And I was like, okay, that one's the least amount of hours, the least amount of money. I'll mm-hmm. take that one, put it to the side. I'm not going to do that anymore. And then several years in, I was like, okay, now my show, that has to be the next to go. Because mm-hmm. I never made a ton of money because it... Uh, drag until Drag Race started really didn't wasn't a, a job that most people sure. could make a living at. Some people absolutely, but yeah. not most people. And yeah, it was just like okay, now we're taking that one off the plate. But I had worked so much for so many years. Yes, I was just exhausted. And yeah. then you know, went from that to uh, having my own salon and being full time mom. Yeah, and it's like. You just transferred responsibilities, yeah. essentially. So at the same time, I'm doing, yeah. still doing full two, two full-time jobs, yeah. and I'm wiped out. Mm-hmm. And so now, all these years later, my children are 12 and 14, mm-hmm. and I just need to lay down. I'm tired already for tomorrow. Yes, girl. You know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, girl, I need yeah. a rest. And uh, most people at my age are probably at least thinking about retirement, and I'm just sort of thinking about it, but... Because I've been an independent, you know, mm-hmm. contractor all these years and had my own business, I don't have I don't have retirement. Yeah, and I put money into a retirement account for the first time ever when I bought my salon. Started putting money, and then the economy crashed. Mm. So the money I put in then basically disappeared. Ugh. Because it's all investments and shit, mm-hmm. and it was like, oh, your money's gone now. Oh, devastating. I've never had a savings like that. For, yeah, you know, specifically like an IRA. And then it was gone. Yeah. I was like, 
how awful. Uh, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, girl, that's why I love, like, this younger generation and what everyone learned during the pandemic, right? Is that nothing really matters if you could die right now. You know what I mean? Like, so you need to take care of yourself and enjoy what you can and be happy and find the things that make you happy. And during the pandemic, and for a while, I've been doing this thing where I if I don't want to do something, then I don't do it. Um, yeah. Or I, and I just give myself grace. You know what I mean? I meant to clean my house. I meant to do laundry. I meant to, and I didn't feel like it. So I didn't do it. And of course that can't be how you do things all the time. But like, if I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to make myself miserable to oh. do something that my mental health is telling me. Like I am just, I just literally fucking can't right now. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's no joke. So I just, I try to, uh, bite size everything currently just because I'm so over it. Like I do homework for an hour and then I'll do homework a day later for yeah. an hour. You know, I can't, I just don't have the mental capacity. And honestly, nothing, again, like I've already said, like I have a house and I have this man and I have these two jobs that aren't hard really, you know, and I have, and I go to school and I'm about to graduate and all the things are good. I live next to my family. It's all really amazing, but I'm still so fucking burnt out and so tired and so annoyed. Um, and a, nothing in particular, right? Yeah. If I could, I wish I could be like, it's your fucking fault. You're the person, you're the thing, whatever it is that is making me feel this way. But, you know, also having lifelong issues and hereditary issues with like mental health. Um, I just think it's time for me to be assisted with my mental health again. And yeah, I'm a huge advocate. Like you need drugs. You need the drugs from the doctor to make you feel better than take the drugs from the doctor. Yeah, absolutely. And I have been on and off antidepressants since I was like a teenager. So I don't really, you know what I mean? It's not new to me, but I, I think, and my personal belief is that's how they should be used, right? Is use them while you need them. If you don't feel like you need them anymore, then go off them for yeah. a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just, and I don't feel like overwhelmingly sad. You know, some days I'm more sad. Some days I'm more anxious. Some days I'm irritated. Some days I'm all of it. But like, I just feel like I don't want to. I just don't want to. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I do know. That's I do at. get it. I, uh. I wake up super early every morning. Well, super early for me. I it's like you know five o'clock, mm -hmm. and which is a stupid hour of the day. Yeah. I mean, I really, if I could, I would sleep until seven every day at least. But I can't, and so mm -hmm. I don't. And then I get up, and, and then I'm just tired all the time. Yeah. And so yeah, it's problematic. But as I as I get older, I also have learned to um, really put things into perspective as like. This thing over here is not important. One of the things that also I think helped me, I have always been the way that I'm the person who will go, oh my God, my house is a pigsty. Right. Okay, my house is never a pigsty. My house is dusty and there's clutter. Yeah. I mean, like right now I'm looking around going, you know, I have a, a table full of shit that my children will not put away. Right. And I'm not fighting with them about it. No. I have stuff that isn't where it belongs, but I'm not fighting about it because I, I it's a losing battle. And also, yeah. And who why? Cares? Who yeah. cares? I don't care. Inconsequential. But I'm no longer the person who will apologize for my house to other people. It's like, no. oh, my house, I'm sorry my house is the best. Because one, I think that's mostly disingenuous. Yeah. I think when people say that, they're hoping that you're going to go, oh my God, no, your house no. is so, oh no. Stunning. Honey, honey, it's all great. No. And I don't care. Mm -mm. And if you think that my house is a fit, don't come. <laughs> then don't come over it's girl, like, that's honestly. like I said earlier with the pride. if you don't like pride products don't buy them yeah if you don't want to go to pride don't go don't go you don't like my house don't come I, yeah, don't, care. I don't care I don't want people here anyway yeah. I mean I want the people who I love and who fully expect we want the compound yeah. that's it that's it I mean in the in, the few, in our few friends and family <laughs> yeah the folks that we call the usual suspects mm -hmm. I mean like my sister can come visit yep Auntie you know, Alicia with her family Auntie Alicia you know those Auntie, people the yep. people who love and accept us for who we are yeah not tolerate. No. But well, they love might and accept it. Well, on the days we're super crazy. You know? But also, yeah. one of the things that helped me is, again, my husband. Because he grew up in a hoarding situation mm. with someone who had drug and alcohol and mental health issues. Yeah. And his house was never even remotely clean. Mm -hmm. And so when I go, ah, oh, the house is a disgusting disaster. He's like, what are you looking at? Yeah. You know, because this to him is clean. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, it, it can, whatever. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I really had to kind of get over myself, but also being raised by a housekeeper. Mm -hmm. You know, there's that. It's yep. like, 
Oh, I see, I see dirt over here. And that's the other thing. Sometimes I'll be sitting watching television and I see a little tumbleweed blow by. <laughs> because with having three dogs, <laughs> yeah, like, you're, yeah. like, you're going to have hair. Yeah. And I'm like, oh God, I should get up and sweep or vacuum or do it. And then I'm like, no, no I'm going to sit here and I'm going to watch the rest of the show. Yep. By the way, I'm also going to just make a couple of recommendations of cute shows that uh, we just watched. Um, School Spirits. Oh, right. Uh, which is on Something. Paramount Plus. <laughs> yeah. And really enjoyed it. We finished the first season. It's only like eight episodes. Um, but it was really good. I really liked it. Yeah. And some also some good twists and turns. Where you're like, oh, I did not see that coming. Um, Rise of the Pink Ladies. Mm. Also on Paramount Plus. Um, it's a prequel to Grease. Mm-hmm. It's... Um, but and unlike Greece, where the whole idea is, you know, change everything about yourself. Yeah. To make man, to yeah. get a man. Yeah. Uh, this is like, um, no. Yeah. Be who you are. Yep. But it also deals with racism, misogyny, uh, all the isms. All the isms, all girl. The isms. And so I really enjoyed that. And for fun and absolutely pointless, we've been watching Ghosts. And so now oh, I started so watching the British... Oh, yeah, okay. The original series. Yeah. Uh, also, just cute. So cute. Not yeah. deep, not whatever. It's just Sorry. fun. Yeah, yeah. So when you need something light and fluffy and fun, uh-huh. yeah. Um, what, what have I been watching? Oh, I've been watching a lot of Doctor Who, right? Oh, yes, you said that. I had never watched it before. Gavin loves it. So now I'm, I just started season five. I think I'm in like um, episode two of season five. It's really great. It's funny. It's but just isn't it really like season 500 because it's been on forever? Well, yeah, I was on for like 24 years from like 60 something to 89. So yeah, I was on for a long time. Um, but so yeah, da- like David Tennant, who's like the doctor for yeah. like four years or whatever, he's like the seventh doctor or something like that right. in all of the Doctor Who. Anyway, it's really good and there's some, and a lot of great people are in it and it's, it's really interesting. It's silly, goofy, um, but I really like that. Um, yeah, well, I don't even know what else I'm watching. Oh, well, I, you know, I have my comfort shows. Yeah. So I'm watching Raising Hope, because it has Martha Plimpton in it. Love it's her. Really, it has uh, Cloris Leachman in it. Love and her. I want you to know, she is my favorite fucking character in that whole show, because she is, like, a batty old woman, and dead. She kills <laughs> right. me dead. Um, yeah, and then a show on uh, MGM+, Plus actually. It's called From, and it's really timey, wimey, weird. Like, people get caught in this little town and they can't leave. Like, it's just, like, you try to leave on one side and you just come back in the, you know, the entrance. And so it's, oh. like, them and pe- people from all over the country, and it's people trying to figure out, like, how do we survive? So there's... So it's drama? It's drama, sci-fi spooky. Oh. But it's not, like, space. You're not but it's space. just called From. From. Yeah. It's I don't really MGM+, good. Plus, I don't think. You really should get it. Maybe. Maybe. I thought I had all the pluses. Oh, and then, oh my god, sorry, last thing. And I'm watching, they did a, they've remade War of the Worlds into a series. Oh, right, 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 and when that, you said that. I have watched the first few episodes, and it's intense, because, well, there's um, an invasion of, like, alien species on the right. planet Earth. But it's really good. It's really, it's it's different than, like, the Tom Cruise War of the Worlds, you know what I mean? Yeah. From, like, 2000 or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, anyway. So that's what I do when I'm feeling burnt out, is watch TV. <laughs> I know, you've watched Modern Family, like, all the way through three times. Oh, and... well, in, like, the show Community, that's about community college yeah. with Joel McHale, um, that's my night-night show now. So when it's time to go night-night, I put that on, and then I, right, until I go night-night. I know I told you I watched The Good Place all the way through, like, mm-hmm. three times. Yeah. Just because it, it makes me feel good. Girl, oh, there, mo- yeah, Modern Family, Superstore, I've watched... All of these shows about 150 times. Because I, when I'm home alone, want some background noise. Yeah. I don't want to watch one of the shows I'm watching with Gavin. I'm going to put something on that I've already seen. Right. Yeah. Well, the other thing I have found, and then we have to wrap it up, is that for me, those shows that I've watched now multiple times, those people feel familiar. Oh. Like old friends. Yes. Uh-huh. I was uh-huh. like, oh, okay, I'm going to watch this. Yeah. And I'm going to... And I know what's going to happen. Sure. And I did learn, and we talked about this before, that that is a sign of anxiety, Mm -hmm. wanting to watch the same thing over and over, because you know how it's going to turn out. Yes, girl. And And I'm like, yeah, I get it. Okay, well, that's us. On that note, we're anxious. We're anxious. We have (laughs) mental health issues, and we're tired of stupid white people. Yeah, girl. We're stupid. Yeah. So we're going to lam out. Yeah, we are. And go do other things. Uh, or do nothing. Yeah. You know, probably that Because we're burnt out. So yeah. we're going to maybe do nothing. Yeah. And, um, but if you would like to write to us. Do it. Do it. 
Uh, it would seem as though at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And thank you for listening. We appreciate you being here. And uh, we'll talk to you again next week. Yeah, we will. Okay, bye. Bye. It would seem as though. Thank mm-hmm. you.